Hi guys, James here from Plumber Parts of Credit UK. This is gonna be a bit more of a job reporty type video. We've got this kitchenette area behind us here. I've installed all the pipe work in a previous video. I'll leave a link to that below. But what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off with everything looking like this. And then we're gonna end up with everything installed and running looking like this. So what I'm gonna do is talk to you about my thought processes where I'm putting the carcass in. Also, I'll talk to you a little bit about cutting the worktop as well for the sink. And finally as well, doing the pipe work and getting everything commissioned and making sure that it works okay. So if you like this video guys, please hit that like, please comment on the video as well. Please subscribe, that's massively important. There's gonna be links as well at the end of this video, just especially for you. But let's get on with it now anyway guys. And remember to hold tap. See you soon. Right then guys, so I've got our uh, hot and cold in here. They're the wrong way up, which obviously means everyone's gonna die of imminent hot and coldness. So we've got the waste going through to a little basin in there, and then the hot and cold go through there as well. We've got this little water feature bit as well. We installed all this, like I said, in another video. This is what we'd call the first fix. What we'd usually do now is we would usually use a bit of carcass that's got a cavity in the back of it. We'd cut some holes out in the back of the cavity and then poke our pipe through these ones here that you can see at the right point. But the bit of carcass that we've got is from a certain Scandinavian, or I don't know where they're from. Starts with I, ends with A. Uh, and they don't really have that back bit. And on this particular bit of carcass, there is nowhere for us to run in that cavity. So what I've had to do is knock out the incredibly robust back bit that's made of that and basically forget about it, which makes this job a lot easier, I admit. But that means that really our first stage is quite simple. What we want to do is make sure that our carcass tops are at the right height. The kickboard is about 85 mil. Then we've got the carcass going over the top of that. So what I wanna do first is make sure that that's correct, make sure that it's level, and then we can measure up the carcass so we can cut our side bits out for our pipes. Then we can fix the carcass to the wall and then fit the worktop on top. So let's do this first bit now. hate all this stuff because of legs, but they're adjustable. So really the best thing you can do is get all the legs onto a bit of carcass, then adjust it up so you've got the right height for your kickboard, but also so the carcass is fully level. Never seen a love looking like this. I just want to say that this is not like the top spec type of carcassing that I'd fit. It's in a utility room at my gaff. It's in the kitchen, I'd have had better, believe me. But uh, what I tend to like to do with kickboard is just leave it so it's got like about five mil play in it because you're never really going to see the top of the kickboard unless you get right down on your all fours, which some people like to do in the kitchen when they're making love. Get the uh, Michael Bublé out. So guys, regardless of all my silly jokes and stuff like that, it's super, super important that you use spirit levels that you trust and that you use them across the three main kind of axes when you're leveling up. That is the back long axis, the side axis that I've got there, and also your upright as well. I take it that you're not thick and you know that you level up using the feet on the bottom. Right, so now that we've got our sort of rough height for our carcass, I know it's not 100% level, front to back it is, just got to go up at that end a little bit. All I need to do is make the marks on the carcass itself so we can get it pushed back properly to the wall, then I'll get it properly leveled, then we'll drill the holes and get it fixed back to the wall. And that's effectively the carcass bit done. So I'm just gonna take this. It's very simple to do this bit, just make the marks properly. The first thing you wanna do is mark the marks sideways. So we've got a mark. It also helps as well that you put a cross on the bit that you're gonna get rid of. So like that there, that cross there, and we cross there. Now it's tape measure time. What we're gonna do is we're gonna pop the tape measure to the wall, just like that, and then make a reading of where it comes off at the end of the pipe bit that we wanna get rid of, and then we'll transfer that reading over to here. So then we know how far out we need to do our hole. Looks a little bit like this. Now you might be wondering why I'm using a circular saw for this bit. The reason is, is because it makes a nice gradient kind of cut rather than a square type cut when you're going round a pipe. And I just think it looks so much neater again. Then I'll use my standard spade bit and then I'll use my lovely little multi-cutter tool as well. Remember, all the tools in this video guys you can buy in our Amazon shop. Right then gang, once we've done that, I did that on the other side just there. We should just be able to find that we push this in nicely now into the position that it wants to be in. Um, so yeah, just a bit of a clear out really, just make sure everything's clear. Oh, my phone keeps going. That's the hardest thing about being a plumber, is your phone. That is bang on just there. So you see this mark that we've got down here, I'm just gonna push this back. So it's in line with that mark, and then we know that's where we're gonna drill. And then also, just while I'm here, just grab my spirit level as well, 
and just pop that. Now I'm gonna drill the holes, get it pinned back to the wall, and then we can move on to the next stage, which is something to do with your mum. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is one of those annoying bits in the video where you guys can't see that the walls are made of utter butter and nothing good. Now we've got those two back bits in, and like I said, they've got a lot of movement at the back. I can then get my spirit levels, have a long and a short spirit level for this sort of job. That's what will get you to a stage where you can sort of move on and be happy with what you're doing. So we've now got this piece in. What we need to do now really is get a proper line all the way around the wall where our worktop's going to go, and then physically install the bracket tree huh? for the worktop, the bracket tree, the bracket tree. And then we can put the worktop on here, get it cut down to size, get the end on, and also get the whole cut for our sink as well. So like I said, use a spirit level to guide your way around, or even better if you've got one, use a laser to put a laser line all around the wall and then follow that around with your pencil. Once we've got that level line, we'll be able to move on to the next stage. Right then guys, so now I've got a level line all the way round all I need to do is cut and fix my battening to these lines and then I'll be ready to actually start getting my worktop measured up and mounted again you have no idea about how bad the walls are here so just make sure whatever fixings you're using they are suitable for the substrate that you're going into if they're not you're gonna hit problems and the next thing you want to do is try and make sure your walls are square if they're not you're gonna to have to measure up and try and cut that square out hope to God that you don't have to cut the long side out of your worktop because what we're gonna do now is measure up and cut the worktop itself. So what I always do is measure from two points, the front point there and the back point, to the front point here and the back point there. Fortunately, both those measurements are exactly the same. I also now have to account for the fact that we've got an end panel going on and then account for the fact that I wouldn't mind a bit of an overhang on the worktop just because it looks nice. So I think we're gonna to go to for 2130. Now I'm gonna go through the sheer joy of getting the worktop into position so I can cut it. <sighs> I might need to play some Prince actually. Prince, the album, Planet Earth. One of his best, really is. Imagine now, a planet Earth. <laughs> Lovely, oh, beautiful. It's <laughs> what I like to see. Now for the first time, we can actually get our worktop up and just marry it up to where we're going. And the worktop really like binds the whole job together really when it comes to where you're gonna be putting stuff. Also, I noticed guys as well that this worktop has been lent up against something in the store and it is bent. Right then guys, so we've got the worktop in. It's about this sort of point I realise how much I really need my hair cut. Tori booked in on Monday. Hopefully she'll come around and do it. But anyway, we've got the worktop in. It is a little bit on the huah, and I'm gonna have to figure out work rounds to get all this sort of working properly. We've got our worktop on, we've got our pipes in, we've got our carcass back and fixed, and we're ready now to get our cutout done for our sink. Once we've done that, we've got it fixed down. The hardest bits of the job are actually done. Because plumbing, once we've got it all in and we've got our, our valves and everything there, we've got control over the situation. At the moment, you know, plumbers have to do all different types of jobs. We are supermen and women. That's just how it is. Right, I'm gonna go and get the uh, sink now. A nice little funky one. I call it Funk because of the film trilogy, Pusher. It's Copenhagen, foreign language film, got Mads Mikkelsen in it. Watch it if you like your drug movies. It's really good. Manufacturers have different ways of doing it. Usually, most manufacturers nowadays, when you actually get your sink, they'll have like a pop-out bit of card that you can just pop out, lay on there, scribe around it, and then do your cut. We haven't got that with this one today. Overall size is 860 by 540, but the cutout size needs to be 840 by 490. So because we don't have that area where we can scribe round, we have to start off with a starting point. Now on this job here, what I wanted to do was make sure that we were furthest over to the left as possible without actually weakening the worktop itself and also being inside the carcass for our bowl. So I started off at that end. Then after that, all you need to do is measure out a nice rectangle that's completely square on the corners. Use lots of straight edges, measure a million times. There's no point getting this wrong because you've only got one worktop there and you don't want to be going back and buying another one because you cut it wrong. So I'd say the mantra for this job is measure a million times, use lots of straight edges, and make sure that everything's nice and square as well with your measurements. Uh -huh. 
I tend to use a circular large wood bit to go through in the corners as my starting point so I can use a jigsaw or a circular saw. So I've now got my worktop marked up. Multiple ways you can cut worktops, obviously. I always use a drop saw. Uh, a rail saw is really good if you've got a fez tool and you're a proper chippy, that's what you're gonna be using. Uh, or I think that's what most of them I've seen use. You might need a jigsaw to go around these bits, but whatever you use, make sure you're happy using it. Don't use something you're not happy with. I'll always cut with these and then I'll use my fane to clean up the joints when we're done. If you can, use an off-cut piece that you've got already to set your drop saw to the right depth or go to the end of the worktop itself and try and set it to the right depth there. We don't want to be going so deep through that we cut the carcass or anything underneath the worktop. Also, if you are going to use a disc saw like I am in this video, make sure that you have some sort of scratch protection on the bottom of the disc saw so you don't actually cut the worktop itself. I usually have a few small foam pads that I nick off window fitters to put on the bottom and that usually protects nicely the work top but also gets you low enough so you get an accurate cut as well. There's pretty strong evidence against TI. Now lots of different manufacturers have different ways for you to fix a sink down. Usually they're sadistic, you're going to have to get under there, tighten up, screws, it, it's really really hard. My personal favourite way of doing it is silicon and then weight it and then leave it the night. Clamps along the bottoms, often the carcasses you have to butcher to get them in and silicon Let's face it guys, who's gonna go around trying to prise one of these sinks out? So yeah guys, happy with that. What I need to do now is just fix the worktop down, make sure that's all okay. Screw up through my battens into the bottom of the worktop, so I'm gonna whip around and do that now. Right then guys, so I've got my big heavy bucket on there, just weighing that down. We've had a bit of an issue. <clears throat> so the underside of this sink is supposed to be, this is actually supposed to, to take the waste and the basket of a sink, so I'm told anyway. And it doesn't, so what I've done so I can sort of finish this video for you is actually done a bit of a butcher hackery on the back here. I'm gonna try and clear that up a bit as well. What I'm probably more than likely gonna do now is take these two off and actually just turn this into a standard opening up one. What I wanna show you more than anything else is the pipework side of this job anyway. I mean, that does work, it's just it needs filing off. So anyway, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna whip these two out, we're gonna do some pipe work under here, and then we're actually gonna get this job pretty much finished off. I'll get these panels back on, I'll get the side panel back on, and I'll show you everything actually working. Moral of the story is, make sure what you order will do the job. Right then guys, so when it comes to installing the pipe work that you're gonna be putting in, what you need to have before you get started is what your endpoints are gonna be. And your two main endpoints for your hot and cold are obviously going to be, if you've got them, the flexible connectors on the bottom of the tap. If you've got them in place, then you'll know where you're piping to, won't you? And you'll be able to plan out the pipe work that you're gonna be installing. Just to talk very quickly about the tap itself, make sure that if you've got a braided hose that's got color coordination on there, that you get them the right way around, so you're gonna have a hot and a cold, and then that just makes it easier for anyone who comes along in the future. If there's any gauzes in there, make sure that they're there already, and uh, and just make get a good knowledge of how the tap goes together. Um, this one is what we call a monoblock kitchen tap, so that will have a small screw that goes into the bottom like this, and then that'll have a clamp arrangement that goes underneath. I'm particularly proud of these beasts, actually, because my old man made these. I've probably gone on about them before. Bought a double set of tap spanners and just put a T-bar on the end of them. You would not believe how much easier they make this job. Oh, it's ridiculous. So look, we've got the body just on here. It's a matter of just tightening this up literally as hard as you can. Uh, you always want these fairly tight. Frankie, I think it's Frankie, sell a special like plastic triangle that can go under here. It stabilizes the stainless steel or the surface of the sink that you're going onto. So now I have an area now, I know where these are going to, don't I? And then I've got my hot and cold down there and I'm gonna have to do a little bit jiggery pokery to get this up to where I want it. Um, it might not be the most beautiful pipe work in all of the land, but it, I'll try my best to make it look neat. And sometimes that's all you can do. Guys, you know I've done loads of videos on how to bend pipe and everything, but the one thing I'd always say when it comes to doing this sort of work is get your clips in first and then pipe up to your clips. And also when it comes to doing the waste pipe and things like that, lay everything out and then figure out what you do and don't need. Right then guys, so we've got everything in here now. We've got a hot and cold in, we've got our little valves at the top. If we ever need to drain these legs down, we can drain them down from there. Okay, I know there's gonna be a little bit of water in here, but it's better than having like four or five meters of head 
above us and all that sort of stuff, so that's pretty cool. As you can see there, Frankie overflows are quite strange. They go straight into the bowl like that, and then you do them up. You pop this little cap off here and then do them up through there, so that's all done. It's always important to have a really good clean up, guys, before you go on and put all your drawers in. I'm not gonna go over that, guys, because every type of system is different and I can't cover them all. Just make sure you measure everything a million times before you do it, like I am doing with these handles here. Right then guys, so there we go, all done. We've done the whole job now. I'm really pleased with it for a utility room. It's gonna do exactly the job I want it to do. You know, utility rooms end up getting covered in paint. It doesn't have to be the best work in the whole wide world. But at the same time, you don't wanna be doing stuff that isn't great at the same, you know, which is why that drawer is gonna get changed. But I wanted you guys to see us putting it into the wall, putting the carcass in, the small alterations you have to do, just the thought process around it and just sort of watch over my shoulder as I did it. I knew I was gonna do this job and I thought it'd be a waste for me to do this, not film it and share it with you and also with my huge, great big tabby beast, Mr. G. So we're gonna say goodbye now. Yes, we are. Come here. Me and my tabby beast here, Mr. G, now say goodbye. We request that you subscribe, that you comment and that you like below as well. And also make sure you go to our Amazon tool shop and also follow my other vlog channel that's got lots of tabby in it, Times of James. See you soon, guys, and thanks for watching. Hold that! Yummy, yummy, yum. Do you get the belly scrubs? I think you might get belly scrubs. <laughs> Poor old beast. Do you want to come out? George, this way. Does it get the seal of cat approval, George?